Your parents have favorites. It's true. Um, and I am no different. Oh, 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 Slinky tamed himself. I gotta give him a kiss. Mm, there you go. I trust this lizard more than any other animal here at the camp, but there is a favorite of the favorite. <laughs> That's my boy. What's going on everybody? Hanging out here with Nostradamus. And today we're gonna be hanging out with my favorite animals at camp. Don't tell the others. But here's here's the truth. You know I like to give you guys the truth here on the channel. Your parents have favorites. It's true. And I am no different. I'm a reptile parent. And I've got a few favorites here at the camp that I'm gonna share with you. Um, like for example, my wife has favorites also. Uh, you know, we have two kids, and she's got a favorite girl, Sophia, and she's got a favorite boy, Leo. And I've got a favorite tortoise, and that is Nostradamus. Nostradamus and I have been pals for 18, no, 19 years. Can you believe it? 19 years just this August. So it's just incredible. Oh, look out, loose behind me. They heard me lavishing attention on one tortoise. So here comes Darwin. Oh, Darwin's a good girl also. But you see, the funny thing about Darwin is, even though she's coming around, it's taken such a long time for her and I to kind of get a relationship. And look at this. She's actually starting to raise up a little. But when you notice the scratches that Nostradamus gets, he was just so easy. Once he got past about that big, he and I just really bonded. He was about, gosh, he was only that big and I could scratch his neck and hang out with him. And even when we visit my friend Sam Piscucci, he has certain tortoises that might be young that don't behave in the way that all the others behave. Now watch yourself because Nostradamus may take a nibble out of you and I gotta keep an eye on Darwin over here because she'll probably take a little nip out of my uh, T-shirt. They're looking for a taste of anything. They think everything is food. Anyhow, back to the story at hand. So basically, it's really interesting how certain reptiles, certain animals just have these interesting personalities. They all have them, but some just wind up endearing themselves to you. And you can see just how beautiful this tortoise is. He's so trusting. He allowed me to do this from a very early age. And the story that you guys may not know about Nostradamus is when I got them at the Daytona Reptile Show back in August of 2004. I actually bought two. And these guys were actually from a farm in Mauritius. So they were flown over here to the United States and I picked them both up, brought them home, also brought another one of my favorite animals we're gonna be meeting in a little while. And I instantly started raising them outdoors. Now, what do you notice about this incredible shell that Nostradamus has? This is basically what everybody notices when they walk in here. They go, oh my God, his shell is so perfect. If you're a tortoise nerd, you know, raising a tortoise with a beautifully smooth shell like this is an incredible feat. What do you want? What do you want? Yeah, I thought so. Anyway, she doesn't like when he gets too much attention. So you can just see that this tortoise's shell is just perfect. And I'm very proud of that. Um, I raised him up you know, the best I could. And I raised them up outdoors the whole time, fed them, uh, basically him and his, his uh, little brother were raised up. They lived outside their entire lives. I never had these guys under artificial light. And they were always allowed to browse and graze for their food. Very, very important. Well, unfortunately, about a year into owning them both, the other Aldabra got pneumonia and died. It was very sad. As soon as I noticed there were problems with them, I wound up getting them to the vet, and that very next day the animal died. It was pretty horrific for me. Oh, excuse me, everyone. Oh, gosh. This is a dangerous position to be in, because you can't get crushed by these giant tortoises. Now, Socrates isn't big enough to really do too much damage. He's but, heavy, though. Oh, he's pushing me. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Look at this. They're both realizing there's no food, just loves and hugs. <laughs> All right. Anyway, trying to get back to the story at hand. So we lost the uh, the other of the Aldabras. And so it was just Nostradamus. So I really made sure I focused on him to make sure nothing else would happen. And um, yeah, I built them outdoor enclosures. They lived outside. He lived outside his whole life. And then once I got Socrates over here in 2005, I put them back together and he had a buddy. 
and he's been out here ever since uh, in this front area. Oh, in, in these homes right here? Right, originally they were in that home, um, but apparently, you know, as you can see, you know, Nostradamus is large, Socrates getting big, and so is our friend Nostradamus. Nostradamus is close to 200 pounds now. In 19 years, 200 pounds, it's incredible. So basically they can only fit one at a time in there. They couldn't get around each other. So um, I basically um, shut this one off and built the new one of which you can see the video. And uh, we got that new one, it's more spacious and it'll facilitate uh, a few more. Cause as you know, we have three more Aldabras growing up just over there. And uh, I can't wait to see what their personalities become like. Uh, Cersei and Timmy are definitely really uh, becoming more and more uh, gregarious, whereas Boba is hiding a bit more. So we'll see uh, what happens, but they're gonna be living out here. I love this enclosure because they really get to explore it. They get to eat the browse. And as you, as you see, the whole time I'm talking, he's not doing anything but just hanging out, uh, getting his scratches and being just about the best tortoise I've ever seen in my life in appearance and in personality. So that's why he's one of my very favorite here at the camp. I love him so much. I gotta give him a kiss. Oh, excuse me. There you go. Nice kiss. All right, let's have a little bit of a walk. We're gonna go to somebody that I got same time I got our friend over here. Whew, man. I love uh, strolling through the park here and seeing all the animals. So now we're gonna go to another one of my favorites. Who do you guys think it is? I wanna know. Uh, put in order of favorites before the video ends. I want to see if you guys can guess who my favorite animals here at the camp are. Okay, so walking on over, we're going to go visit somebody that I got when he was that big. And I got his girlfriend too. Of course, we're going in to see Guapo and Lola. And it's Guapo, everyone. Guapo is, he's a showstopper here at the camp. Watch your head, Matt. He is just a showstopper. I absolutely adore this lizard. Again, look at this. I come right in, what happens? He knows daddy's here. He's come to get a scratch, wants to hang out with him. Um, I've never had any aggression shown to me by this animal. Uh, he's always been docile. Um, Lola up there has always been good to me as well. But the reason I love him so much is that he's just such a good dude. Lola beats up on him or used to beat up on him for many, many years. You'll notice he's mission, missing a couple of digits on his back feet here. This one, and if you go on the other hind leg over here, you'll oh, see yeah. he's missing a few. And that's from Lola being a jerk. However, that's all in the past now. All that aggression is done. He's very welcoming of other people, as you see Matt's right now just scratching them and hanging out with them. I trust these lizards, or this lizard, more than any other animal here at the camp. Whenever I give a little tour, um, I always bring people here. I can bring him out. I know that he won't bite. He's incredible. That being said, whenever I do a tour, I don't allow people to just thrust their hands in his face or things like that. I like gentle. I like them to pet back here. We want to respect the animal. We want to make the animal comfortable. We want to continue to keep that trust that we have. But do you see this? Look at this body positioning. Now, those of you who have watched the channel for many, many years know that I talk about this body positioning with the Cyclora iguanas, all the rock iguanas, the head up, the base of the tail up, but the tip is down on the ground. Uh, he's standing straight up. This is a content or submissive pose. He's very happy. He enjoys this interaction. Out of all the lizards I've kept, this is the most like a dog I have. He's just spectacular. The great thing about both him and Nostradamus is these are a species of animal um, that live a very long time. 50, 60 years is not gonna be any kind of problem for a Cyclora rock iguana. This is a Cuban rock iguana. And all of them, uh, all of the, the rock iguanas are long lived. So the fact that I know he's 19 years old also is pretty awesome because we've got plenty more time here together. In fact, it's possible he'll outlive me. In which case, Sophia is going to be the next caretaker of these animals. And these happen to be her favorite as well. She's allowed in here. I trust these animals. I trust her. And there's not been any issue. She comes in and scratches them and spends time with them. And that gives me a lot of joy to see a child um, that I'm raising, uh, helping to raise, uh, being kind of 
interacting with animals that I love. It's the way that I know Sophia and I bond and love each other, that she loves the same things I love. So it's pretty cool. So I'm really happy uh, about this animal. He's just incredible. Again, there have been times, even at a young age, okay, when I had these guys, they originally started in the next enclosure. As soon as they were large enough to not fit through the wire, they moved into these enclosures and I would come in here all the time. I would be in here and sometimes they'd get so excited, they'd climb up my legs, they'd sit on me. Even at this size, I've had Guapo come on up and sit on my Akubra hat or just perch right on top of my head and I think it's the coolest thing I allow it to happen because which one of us wouldn't love that kind of interaction with our reptiles? I know all of us strive for that, especially with animals uh, that look so ferocious that most people see and they're like, oh my God, it's a dinosaur. That thing's gonna get you. Oh no. Look at this, he's shedding nicely. I come in here, I help out by oh, pulling off some of his shed. Yep, it's ready to come mm -hmm. off. You know, just gentle, yep. Yeah. And then it helps him and I just peel it right off him. And I think he appreciates that. He'll let you know if it's not ready to come off because he'll try and shake you off and stuff like that. But again, just hanging out with him, him allowing me to be a part of his life is really amazing. So it's all about reading the body language. You can see him closing his eyes. Oh and yeah. Trusts you. Yeah, it's so cool. So he cool. Pushes into your hand. And, it, I, yeah. Exactly, and I've had Lola actually come over and rub right into my leg, almost like a cat would. It was really unique, and I wonder if they're just marking me with some of their own scent, um, if they're kind of claiming me as their own, because they know that I am the large creature that brings them the goodies. So uh, again, and, and that's another fair point, uh, that I should bring up here, uh, or good point rather, Matt, is that you notice we don't have any food. This is an interaction that is not based on a reward. This is an interaction where the reward is just the interaction. The scratches, the grooming, you know, the peeling. Uh, I consider the removal of some of the loose skin as a grooming. Um, it's helping him, so why not? He enjoys it, and I love him, and he's so stout and solid. He is, he's very strong feeling. Yeah, he's just amazing. All of, all of the animals here are. They're yeah. They're very dense and strong. Yeah, they're, they're really incredible. Oh, he's gonna say hello. He's gonna go ahead and come on up here. Look at this. And I've never had any fear with him. That being said, we don't push limits. We don't do anything that is out of the ordinary. Look at this, look at this. Daddy. Oh, look at this. He sees, <laughs> he that sees yellow. the yellow from the shirt. That's And guys, I'm not worried about being bit. That's just him tasting like, is that food? And no, it is not. It's so funny. It's so bright yellow. Yep. So he's just had a little nibble. But you notice he's not nibbling on actually my flesh, which is a good thing. Look at this guy. I love him. That is so cute. But again, he's just realized there's no food. Nothing here. All right, buddy. He's so funny. He climbed right up. He did. Do you guys want to, I think he climbed up because he wanted to get to that yellow. He thought it maybe was a flower. All right, we're gonna head on out. Let's go on over a few short steps after you, and we're gonna go hang out with another one of my favorite critters. And it may not be who you expect. Well, maybe you expect it. She's, more recently. She's exactly. Yeah. She is a more recent addition of the crew. And um, she belonged to my buddy, Fred Grunwald, which is just, you know, Having this animal uh, a part of the home here is just awesome. Let's see if we can get her out. Yeah, there's there's Lucifer. Lucifer's just enjoying himself up here. I don't even see him out up here. He's yeah, been he's been hanging out, just kind of relaxing. Now let's see who's around. You guys know where we are. We're in Cayman Creek, so we're looking for our girl Marge. Usually it's not long before Marge finds me. Yeah. She's been a lot more social in the last, what, three, four months? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's incredible. She's just got that personality. Some animals just wind up getting this personality. Um, they have them. And remember, Fred fed these animals all the time. And, uh, you know, they were behaving like this for Fred. But Marge is very similar to Garden State Turtle and Tortoises, Chris Leone's Otis. Just strange. Why is she coming out? Well, she wants food, but they they both stick their head up in a very peculiar way. Here she comes, everybody. She Ladies came right over the other turtle. There's Marge. Let's see if we can get her down here. here. Go ahead and walk, Matt. You'll bring her right down. Oh, I'll, I'll come up there, actually. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, this is perfect. 
So let's see if we can get her some food. Marge. No, Marge. Marge, she's, she's the, the camera. The camera, Look yeah. Look how fast she is. Oh, she's so fast. She's so dangerous. Again, just another funny little turtle. There we go. Just another funny Chelonian. And remember, guys, she is going to get so much bigger. She's so fast. Oh, yeah. Amazing. One more. Ah, oh, oh, my God. So close she almost got me. You can't believe you put that that close. Ah, uh, whatever. She will take that off. Yeah, I got it. Hey, she doesn't care that her mouth is full. She I know, she's got to go this. Let her go in the water and swallow some of that before she gets more. She doesn't care that she can't get it down. She doesn't care. She's greedy, man. But I now have she'll a come to the camera. She always does. Oh, yeah. And she is capable. Look at how much she, she just walks right Well, that's the, the road. thing, man. You, you don't realize that snapping turtles are quite agile. In fact, there have been photos, and I've seen these guys climb chain link fences. So, not oh, Marge, you're gonna have to let go. You're gonna have to let go. I'm sure you said at least one more of Kenan's fingers to be. Uh, <laughs> I'm just holding. I can't believe she's doing that. There you go. She lets go. She is so cute. Yeah, it's just a funny animal, man, and she's just shown this personality. So she's become one of my favorites, and I think. Uh, many of your favorites out there, if the comments are anything to go by in the videos, everybody loves Mark. Um, so she's become an animal that I just enjoy. I love coming in here. I love that she runs over to me. Um, I love that she wants attention all the time. Head in the water. Yeah, she could care less. She's an aquatic dragon here. And, and in fact, look how long her neck is. Oh, well, that's a good point. So their Latin name is Chelidra serpentina, which means snake like swamp thing. And that's because of that large neck. So it's good that you noticed that, Matt, because that's what the uh, taxonomist noticed. And that's what they gave her that name. And she likes to eat out of the jug. I had another snapping turtle, Clyde, that I raised up and hatched out, do the same thing. Uh, he lives in the big pond. I haven't seen him in a while, so hopefully he's in there. But um, yeah, she's an amazing girl. We're gonna keep her, we're gonna see how big she gets. Marge will always be in here. So I think it's gonna be fun to go back and watch videos like this in another 10 years to see how big Marge has gotten. She is a gal. And they do get large because they're the ones that lay the eggs. Snapping turtles can reach 50 pounds when full grown. So we've got a lot of growing to do here with our gal, Marge, before we can truly call her a large Marge. And then we can tell you, large Marge sent you. Anyway, let's move along, shall we? Let's head on over to our final favorite critter. I mean, look, guys, you know they're all my favorites, right? There's always a favorite, but there is a favorite of the favorite. All right, well, you guys know, I think you know even before we get there in the direction that we are walking here at the camp, just because so many comments, you know, I get like, who's your favorite? What are your favorite animals? I can't just pick one, but I did bring you to what I think is the king of the camp. Of course, we're talking about Slinky. Let's go in there. Slinky! Again, guys, this is like a situation that arose here at the camp. Here he is. He's in his water. Come on out. Oh, now you got to be a little bit careful with Slinky. He's got sharp teeth and claws, but we want to just kind of see. I sit in here. I allow this to happen. And again, guys, it's a situation that just presented itself to me. Slinky tamed himself. I didn't tame Slinky. I gave Slinky a nice enclosure. I give Slinky um, space. I kind of take up that space with him and allow myself to become something of, um, I guess, a regularity. And you can see the curiosity with this tail, uh, the tongue right there. Um, so Slinky is an Asian water monitor. He's been here for, gosh, I guess eight, nine years now. I don't even know. Um, he's been here for a while and uh, I have to actually mention something and it's kind of a bummer But I want to mention this because I only just found out about this sad news 
and that Joey Casey, who was the man who gave me Slinky, he watched my channel, he's friends of mine on Facebook. Uh, Joey Casey had Slinky when he was little, and Joey was a motocross enthusiast. He remembered me from back in my action sports days, and he saw that I could provide Slinky with a good home, and he gave me Slinky many years ago because I had put a post out saying that I would love to have a water monitor again. And um, he gave me Slinky because Slinky was living in their apartment in Atlanta, Georgia. And he was knocking things over and just getting into trouble, which is what monitor lizards do. But I had just found out that Joey Casey took his own life. And it's uh, pretty sad to hear this because he would always comment on photos and videos of Slinky. And I always thought that was kind of cool that I could give and love this animal so much so that the person who gave him to me would be happy and see that animal uh, happy. But clearly Joey was dealing with some really sad things in his personal life um, and he decided to take his own life and I'm very sad about that because for the reasons I mentioned, he gave me Slinky uh, and I, I feel bad. I only just heard about this maybe a week ago and uh, it's been about a month uh, or so since he passed. So my thoughts are with his family uh, because you know, when people decide to do that, they really don't think about what they leave behind. They leave behind people that love them. They leave behind people and animals and they extinguish any hope for peace in this life. And I think that's kind of unfair for the rest of us. We all have to go through all the trials and tribulations and there's help out there. And I just wish that people would kind of think of a different way to end their pain because the rest of us that are left are left contemplating that. And I've dealt with many people who lost their lives um, by their own hand. And it's very, very, very sad, including one of my best friends, Dave Mira. Um, so I, uh, I miss these people. And um, I just wanted to share that story with you because maybe there's one of you guys out there who is feeling like your back's up against the wall and there's nowhere else to go. And maybe money troubles, girl trouble, guy troubles, um, any kind of trouble you can think of can get you down and depressed. But you have to realize that there are alternatives, that the bad times don't last just like the good times don't last. And we have to be brave enough to do this ride of life. And that's what these animals really give to me. These animals show me how to be tough, how to forge ahead. They're survivors. They've survived from the ages of the dinosaurs. They've evolved, they've adapted, they've grown. Um, you know, I keep them because they fascinate me and every day is a new adventure. And I don't wanna not be here for them or my family and not be around to experience these adventures. And um, that's what these animals give me. So I, I'm asking you guys, if you're dealing with something tough out there, to be brave, to go get the help that's out there. There is help to not be ashamed to ask for help and uh, to take care of your own mental health as well as, I hope I didn't go on and on and turn this into a bummer. I didn't want to do that, but it really affected me hearing about Joey's passing and knowing so many people that have lost their lives uh, to suicide and mental health is, um, is sad for me. So anyway, guys, there is Slinky and you know why he's my favorite because he's a big, large, beautiful dinosaur that's decided he's gonna be my friend. So look at you being all brave there. He's just checking things out. It's just curiosity. And uh, man, he realizes there's no food. About the worst thing that happens with me and Slinky is if I startle him, I get a whip from that tail of his. But Slinky has been an integral part of the channel has been an amazing part of my reptile family. And in my opinion, he is the king here of the camp. Whether or not we've got alligators, it doesn't matter. He is definitely the biggest ambassador here of the camp because when we almost lost him a few years ago to the cold temperatures and I brought him back, I knew there was gonna be a hole in my heart and on this channel. And so many of you love seeing Slinky. And I think one of my proudest moments is being able to provide him with this habitat. A habitat that I've got to shout out, my buddy Jerry Wolf at Wolf's World. If you want to check out his monitor lizards and what he builds and all the fishing adventures he does, check out Wolf's World on YouTube. And also 
Ed the Pond Professor and Greg the Pond Guy from Aquascape. Those guys can be found right here on YouTube as well. And I would advise getting involved with their channel because you can learn so much from them and you can also meet the people that have made Slinky's Habitat an amazing place. Also, my buddy Stuart at Universal Rocks. Can't forget him. So I just wanted to say thanks to those guys for making this beautiful habitat become a reality and therefore enriching this animal's life, which enriches in turn my life and all of yours out there. And there he goes, Slinky slinking on back behind the weeds and back into his habitat where a water monitor should be in the water. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm glad you got to hang out and see some of my favorite animals. But please do me a favor, don't tell everyone else. I don't want anyone getting jealous because I do happen to love the croc monitors and gators and caiman and all the different animals I share my life with and my home with. See you guys later. And hopefully I'll see you guys on another video. So thanks so much and I'll talk to you again real soon.